to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ is your life really as happy and joyful as you'd like for it to be do you really have the blessed life that we find described in the bible if not we encourage you to stay tuned as we think about the blessed life from psalm chapter one welcome to the gospel of christ program my name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. The psalmist said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Psalm chapter 1, verse number 1. We welcome you today as we think about the truly blessed life as found in Scripture. You know, there are a host of people who are searching for happiness and joy, and this is what most of us are really looking for in this life. And yet so many people struggle to find real happiness and satisfaction. Where does it come from? How do I really get the blessed life that we find in Scripture? Well, friend, it's not found in the many avenues that people look for it in today. You can't find real joy and lasting satisfaction in pleasure or wealth or lust or, or human pride or power or authority. Those things won't achieve what we really sometimes think they will. But friend, true happiness can be found in God's pattern for true happiness found in Psalm chapter 1. I want you to notice for just a second with me the words of Psalm chapter 1, and then today we're going to look at God's pattern for really happy and blessed lives. Notice Psalm 1 beginning in verse number 1. The scripture says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law He meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever He does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous." but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Here's a, a plan given by God in the very first psalm of how to have a blessed or happy life on this earth. What do you have to do to have a blessed life? First, 
you have to learn to avoid certain things. That's right. If I'm really going to be happy, and if you're really going to be happy, I've got to make up my mind. I've got to avoid certain things to really be happy in this life. For example, the Bible teaches in this psalm, you've got to avoid ungodly advice or ungodly ways of life. Notice again Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the man, notice this, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That idea of walking in Scripture always represents a practice of life, a way in which one lives. And so when the psalmist says, happy or blessed is the man who walks not, he's talking about living, living, practicing, making that my lifestyle in the counsel of the ungodly. Counsel represents guidance or advice or uh, maybe even a way of life that they espouse and, and want to propagate to other people. And so if you're really going to have the blessed life, Friend, you've got to learn to avoid ungodly advice or ungodly philosophies of life. Uh, I've got to learn to avoid ungodly advice as it relates to Christian living. Friend, real Christian living is all about really dedicating myself to Christ. Luke chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus said, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Too many times I think people, even people who are Christians or claim to be Christians, are not really as happy as they want to be because they have adopted a philosophy that says, if I go to church on Sunday, if I do certain things throughout the rest of the week, if I espouse the Christian ideas, most of the time I'm going to be happy. Friend, that's, that's really not what the Scripture teaches. Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me, let him take up his cross daily. Christianity is an everyday lifestyle. It's something that I strive to do every waking moment. There are a host of people who claim an affiliation with Christianity who are miserable because they want Christianity in the world. They want to have the best of both. And friend, that's an ungodly lifestyle that will not lead to the blessed life. Then you've got to learn to avoid if you're really going to have the best life, you've got to learn to avoid ungodly moral practices. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. The Apostle Paul said, Whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, do all to the glory of God. In my life and in my moral practices, and by moral we mean that which is right or wrong, that which is approved by God or not approved by God. I've got to learn to avoid ungodly moral practices in this life. I want to let the Bible be my guide in determining what is right and what is not right. You see, the Bible is the perfect law of liberty. James chapter 1 verses 22 through 25. The Bible of itself by itself has the power to teach man how to live the best life you can ever imagine. And so as it relates to our speech, I want to let the Bible tell us to, how to speak. Speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Titus chapter 2 verse number 1. As it relates to moral practices, whether it be working hard, honesty, truth, goodness, all those things that we find in Scripture, let's let the Bible be our moral guide. You know, too many times we let the world shape us into its mold when Scripture teaches, really, we ought to be shaped into the mold of God. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse number 1, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And listen to verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world. The idea there is do not let the world squeeze you into its mold. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? And so I want to avoid uh, ungodly practices related to pseudo-Christian living. I want to avoid ungodly principles as it relates to morality. And then, friend, if I'm going to be happy, I've got to avoid ungodly advice as it relates to God. Friend, my whole system of happiness is directly related to my relationship to God. And friend, if I've got a skewed view of God, 
For example, some people believe that, that God is everything, that everything is God. The trees, the ground, the water. And while God created all of that, the Bible doesn't teach God is those things. They represent His nature and His deity, but that's not God. Going out and hugging a tree or uh, being close to a rock is not going to give you true happiness and peace and joy in this life. Some people have a view of God that is really amoral, that God doesn't really care, that He just kind of wound the world up and let it go, and that whatever man thinks is good and right is good and right in his sight. Otherwise known as humanism and a little bit of postmodernism involved in that, friend, that kind of thinking won't make a person happy. W what do we need to know about God? God is our Father. That He's the creator of all life. That in the beginning God spoke and the world came into existence. And that the God whom we serve is a God of love, mercy, and compassion, 1 John 4, verse 8, so much so that He sent His own Son to die for our sins. But you know, friend, if I'm also going to have the happy life, the blessed life, not only do I have to avoid ungodly advice, I've got to avoid the influence of ungodly people. Listen again to Psalm 1, verse 1. The psalmist said blessed, which represents the idea of divine happiness. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel or advice of the ungodly. Now notice this. Nor stands in the path of sinners. To really be happy, don't let people of this world, people who have no desire to serve God and put their trust in Him, don't let them influence you. Rather, we ought to be influencing the world. You know, one of the passages that we often mention, and especially as we think about young people, as we try to encourage our children, based in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, the Bible says, Evil companions corrupt good morals. Let's say that a person wants to really be happy and he's trying to live his life off the Bible. He's trying to walk in the light, 1 John 1 verse 7. He's trying to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, 1 Peter 2 verse 21. He's doing his best to uh, defend himself from Satan and his attacks. And then he aligns himself with people of this world, people who are children of the devil, people who are not trying to live right. How well is that scene going to unfold for that person with people of the world constantly pulling at them, with people of the world constantly striving to do things that are not right and bring them along with that? Friends, such a, a friendship, such a companionship or an association will not help one to really be happy because you're going to have that inward struggle. You know you want to do right. You know you want to talk right. Deep down you want to act right. And then you've got this group of friends that you're following who doesn't have any of those morals and you do things that they do. Deep down that's going to be an inward struggle in which you'll never really have true happiness. Now friend, listen carefully. Do we want to try to win people of the world? Do we want to be good to them? Do we want to try to be friendly to them? Absolutely. But I don't want to make my closest friends children of the devil. I don't want to make my closest friends people of this world who have no desire to follow God and His teaching. That's not going to be. The Bible speaks of not being unequally yoked together. 2 Corinthians 6 verses 16 through 18. And friend, that would indeed be an unequal yoke. I want to be careful that... I don't, that I avoid the influence of ungodly people and that I really have the influence for Christ that I need to. Let me illustrate. Do you remember Matthew chapter 5, about verse number 16? In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says these words, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. The Christian's influence ought to be that of good and light. But friend, if I'm being affected by people of darkness in the world, that's going to be very, very difficult. And so Jesus uses uh, illustration there. He says, no man takes a lamp and uh, puts it under a bushel. Uh, everyone who lights something sets it as it were on a hill, he says, where it can be seen by everybody. Let your light 
so shine that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, not only do you have to avoid ungodly counsel, not only to be happy do you have to avoid ungodly associations, but you've got to avoid the lifestyle of ungodliness. Notice again, there's a third thing mentioned in Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. This idea of sitting represents a complete adoption of, entrenched in, part of that life of ungodliness. Now, this is just a side point, but I want you to notice this. Did you notice the progression of sin in Psalm 1 verse 1? Standing, walks not, stands not, sits not. The opposite of that is one who walks, stands, and sits in. Look at the progression. You're walking in it, you're standing in it, and before you know it, you're sitting in it. The progression of sin, although slow it may seem like at times, has the ability to take one from walking, standing, until he's sitting in entrenched in a lifestyle of sin. And so the encouragement is you've got to avoid the lifestyle of ungodliness. What are some of the things that are kind of characteristic of that lifestyle? It's a lifestyle of selfishness. Friend, this life is not about me and you. We live in very much a, a me society, a society that focuses on man and what can be done for the individual, uh, 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 having his pleasure met almost immediately. But that's not what Christianity is about. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery made equal with God, but he humbled himself, became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Look at the selflessness and humility of Jesus. That's the lifestyle we need. You know, when we talk about avoiding a lifestyle of ungodliness and some of the characteristics of it, friend, worldliness and greed are a big part of that. Can we really have the world and everything in it and God? Listen to James 4, verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore desires to be a friend of the world has made himself God's enemy. If we're not talking about enjoying nature, enjoying the beauty of God's creation, worldliness there represents all the, the, the pleasure, desires, materialism, and, and uh, selfishness that the world so many times focuses on. Do you remember a man who it really cost him a big part when he got caught up in the world? Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. Wasn't that he was a foolish man necessarily in all ways. He had a great crop year. Thinking ahead, he tore down his barns and built bigger barns. And he said to his soul, Soul, you've got many goods laid up for many years. Take it easy, in essence. Eat, drink, and be merry. And God said to that man, You fool. Now here's the point. This night will your soul be required of you. And Jesus' point was, so is he who is rich, but not toward godliness. Here's a man who took advantage of every opportunity, it looks like, was a good businessman, so much so that he's planning for the future, but that man who's good at business, who was a great farmer, who's looking forward to the future, left the most important thing out, his soul was in great desperation because he didn't put his trust and his hope in Almighty God. All right then, moving away from the negative, let's then notice what do I have to do to have the blessed life. Look at Psalm 1 verse 2 with me. The Bible says, Blessed or happy is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he does meditate day and night. To live the blessed life, I've got to find true happiness in God's law and God's teaching. Friend, if I'm really going to be happy like God wants me to, I've got to love the Word of God and live my life based off of its teaching. I've got to accept this book, God's Word, is truth. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth. Your Word is truth. John 17, verse 17. I've got to realize that, that the Bible has the power to free my soul from the snare and entanglement of sin. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, 
and the truth will make you free. If I'm going to really be happy like God wants me to, I've got to meditate in God's law day and night, meaning I've got to study the Word of God, study to show yourself approved. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. Job said in Job 23 and verse 12, Your word is more important to me than my necessary food. I've treasured the word of your mouth more than my necessary food. And so to find real happiness, let's look to God's word to find out how does God want us to live? What does He want me to do? What is a life that finds real joy and satisfaction? And friend, I assure you, that's a life that makes it its aim to glorify God. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 14, verses 13 and 14, that's the whole duty of man. It's a life that isn't so focused on self, but it's a life that tries to serve others. The Son of Man came not to be served but to serve. Mark chapter 10, verse number 45. Then, I want you to notice this. If I make it my aim to really follow the law of God, watch the benefits you're going to reap. Notice Psalm 1, verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Who is that? The man whose delight is in the law of the Lord, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And so when I think about this man, you know, when you think about all the things he's got and how he's going to find that, that really happy life, the psalmist clearly tells us exactly how that is. He's going to be rooted takes roots by the river of water. He's going to be fruitful. He's going to have a solid foundation to build his faith on in the Word of God. He, because of putting his trust in the Word of God, is going to be fruitful in what he does. You remember John 15? Jesus said, if you're connected to the vine, you will bear fruit. Being connected to Christ, having a mindset of focusing on the Word of God, indeed does help us to really be what God wants us to be. And then, of course, that person is going to be faithful. He's not going anywhere. You know, when you think about Psalm 1, verse 3, brings forth fruit in its season, its leaf shall not wither, whatever he does shall prosper. Here's a man who is not going anywhere. His faith is sure. It's firm. He has conviction and trust in Almighty God, and he can be faithful until death. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10. And notice again, whatever that man does, he will prosper. That's not saying that this is a social gospel and that if you become a Christian today, you're going to have all the material blessings and wealth and uh, health in the world. And, and the prosper here, it's not the idea of the necessarily the physical sense, although that may come as well. The prospering is spiritual prosperity. The man who makes it his aim to turn away from evil to seek God in His Word and to live his life to the best of his ability following the Bible, that man's going to prosper because ultimately it's his soul that's going to prosper. What's, what's the most important thing you've got, by the way? Some might say gold. Some might say wealth or money. Some might say jewels or diamonds or even family. Friend, while those things may have a time and place in our life, they're not our most important possession. Jesus asked two questions in Mark chapter 8, verses 36 and 37. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Friend, do you recognize that the most important thing that we have is our soul? This is what the psalmist is encouraging us about. You want to find real happiness? Then turn away from evil. Turn to God. Make it your aim no matter what comes, no matter what happens. I'm going to put my trust in the Bible. I'm going to live for Christ. And then you can be like that tree that's planted by the water that has all the, the support and sustenance that it needs based off of the Word of God. Now the psalmist kind of closes again by noting that the wicked are not so. But they're like the shaft that is driven away by the wind. They don't have that blessed hope that God's people have. Friend, there are only two paths really in this life. One can choose the path of wickedness, the path of apathy, the path of not fully committing to God. And that path is not going to be a good path. That path is not going to lead to true happiness and trust and joy in God. Or you can choose the path 
that leads to eternal happiness in Christ Jesus. A path where if we stay faithful to the Lord, one day we've got this hope. Jesus will say to those who follow Him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of your Lord. Friend, we ask you today, what path in life are you really on? What path are you walking down? Again, we ask you, do you really have that, that happiness, that joy, that peace, that lasting satisfaction in life? And friend, if we don't have that, it very well may be the case that our lives are not being lived by God's plan for happiness in the Scripture. Or maybe you've never obeyed the Gospel. Maybe you don't have that happiness because You've never come to know Christ and be a child of His. Friend, if that's the case, you can surely remedy that situation by obeying the gospel. You might be thinking, well, what do I need to do to become a Christian? Friend, the Bible makes it abundantly clear. Do you believe that Jesus is God's Son, the Savior of the world? Would you be willing, based on that commitment, to turn from sin, turn from the way of evil, and turn to God, known as repentance? Would you confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Romans 10, verse 10. And would you, to have every sin and evil washed away, would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Here's how Jesus said it at the conclusion of the Gospel of Mark. In Mark chapter 16, Jesus tells His disciples, Go into all the world and preach the Gospel unto every creature. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe shall be condemned. Have you believed and have you been baptized to be saved? And friend, if maybe at one time your life had that, that happiness and that satisfaction and that joy because you were walking down that blessed life and, and maybe you've turned back to the world. Maybe you're a lot like the prodigal son who've gone into a far land and spent your time and, and life on worldly living. Just like in Luke 15, the Father stands with open arms, ready to receive you back. If you need to change your life, you need to obey the gospel, or, or you're just looking for a pattern for true happiness, I'll assure you, Psalm 1 has that. And friend, our hope and prayer is we'll submit our lives to that plan to have real happiness. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.